Hello everybody, welcome to Lead Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another episode of the show. A little change in set real quick. Um, so we're going to do today's wine. Uh, actually we're going to do today's and Friday's wine today. Um, and this wine, these wines caught my eye when I walked into the world market. Yes, yes, another world market wine. Sorry um, for those of you that feel that I just, you know, do too much of one place. But, um, and... Uh, the, the you know the label caught my eye and the name of the of the wines caught my eye and uh, so I decided to you know check them out and you know what the prices weren't bad so here's what we're gonna do um, one wine I definitely am pairing with what the wine says the other one I, I got because of the varietals and I'll do that for Friday's wine I got it because of the varietals I've never had um, so let's just get right into it we'll talk about it all right so this is called Wine That Loves Pizza. That is the name of the wine. Um, it is from the Wine That Loves... Oh, it's, it's imported by the Amazing Food Wine Company in San Francisco. Uh, it's a red table wine product of Italy. And um, the website is Wine That Loves. Uh, try to get a little close-up of the label there. Now, this is a blend. I don't have the percentages uh, from the website. Um, this is a blend of, I gotta make sure I remember, remember what they are because they don't say on here, do they? I don't think they do. Uh, it's Corvino, um, Lambrusco, and honestly I don't remember the other, the other one off the top of my head so let me look at my notes. Oh, uh, Rondinella. Now what they go is Rondinella Rapasso on the website and, um, is it Rapasso? This is, this is going to be part of sommelier school this week, too, which is kind of funny how I ended up just deciding to do this. So let me just double check my uh, wording here. Da, da, da. Lambrusco. Yes. Thank you very much. Rondinella. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to do a couple of things here. Sorry, I just want to make sure I get this right. Rapasso, yes. So um, let's talk. I want to make sure I got the term right. So Rapasso, okay. So the three varietals, Corvina is probably the one you may recognize more than anyone else. And Lambrusco is also known as uh, another varietal. Uh, actually, it's known by a bunch. The the varietal that the Corvina varietal is known by a lot of different um, uh, what you would call it. Sorry, I should have I should have uh, had this memorized, but I'm still kind of I'm still kind of uh, excited about V. I just finished watching that. So uh, okay, Colorino. So Colorino is another name for Lambrusco, but just, there's a bunch of names for uh, for this varietal. Uh, I won't go through all of them, but just just know that Lambrusco is one of the names of the varietal. Uh, <clears throat> so you have uh, Corvina, Lambrusco. Um, or Coralino, and uh, oh, I can't remember the name of the other one because it's a name I'm not re I'm not used to um, seeing very often. Rondinella should be easy to do. All right, so before I get into the wine, uh, it's four. I'm sorry, four forty four ninety seven at World Market. Uh, there's no vintage on it, so it's a non vintage wine. And when you look at the website. They, they talk about how um, they're not trying to create an old world wine, or they're not trying to create a wine that, this is an Italian wine, but it's not supposed to taste like an Italian wine. What they're saying is that, that, that all the wines are made in the New World style, which is what Americans want to drink. This is an American wine company. Um, they may source their grapes or um, from other parts, or they may actually ferment it in other parts of the world, but it's an American wine company, so they're doing, they're, Creating the wines to appeal to American palates. Um, this is not meant to be a Valpolicella, which is a lot of the same, you know, a couple, two of the same varietals that use a Valpolicella, which we'll talk about in a couple days. So, oh, and th these, these wines are created to specifically go with the type of food. So this is specifically go, to go with pizza. Here's the pizza. All right, so let's just taste the wine first. Well, let's uh, smell the wine. Now, I can tell you, have I ever had wine exactly like this? No. So, I don't know what it's supposed to smell like. 
So we're just kind of going what it does smell like. Oh, and they did say that these wines can be enjoyed by themselves, which is more key for the next, for Friday's episode than today's, just because, well, we'll get to it. Okay, I don't really get a huge amount from the nose. I get some fruit, which they did say that, that, they're, that these wines are meant to be fruit forward, because that's what Americans like. More fruit than earth is what they, they said. And I don't really smell any earth. I mean, I'm getting some red fruits. Um, specific fruits I'm not, not really certain about, but let's see if I can just get a good little swirl in there. That seemed to help a little bit. A little sweetness. Um... Just again, some red fruits. I want to say cherries. Let's taste and see how it is. You know, as a wine, it's not bad. Um, they talk about how uh, on the back of they talk about intensity, acidity, tannin, and flavor. And they, all the wines have this. And let's talk about tannins real quick. It says, pizza crust can create a dry mouthfeel. So the right wine needs to be low in tannin, which this is low in tannins. No, not much at all. A medium tannin wine will worsen the dryness in a... Yeah, it's going to be longer than seven minutes. Um, will worsen the dryness in a high tannin one will produce an unpleasant astringent taste. So, um, it's a flavor. Because of the tomato sauce, pizza, tomatoes, the fruit dominant, the red fruit base is enlivened by earth and spice. I do get some spice. Not much earth out of this. I don't know why I have a spit bug. I have no intention of spitting. At least not this one. Because uh, I'm having dinner. Oops. You know, as a wine itself, it's it's not bad. I mean, I, I don't consider it like an 89-point wine or and all that, but you know what? It's just pretty... It tastes good, which is the point of the, of the wine. It's, it's meant to... You can drink it by itself, but it's really meant to pair with the pizza. I do get a bit of smokiness to it. Um, I, I call it the barbecue effect, and I think it's, and I think it, it's meant for the tomato. Now I can smell the pizza, so it's already I think interacting. I can smell the garlic, so um, let's try the pizza with the wine. Uh, this pizza now, granted, this is leftover, which you know you know leftovers, especially pizza is always better the next day, right? Now this is a pepperoni sausage pizza. From a place called Julian's, right here in San Antonio. Um, New York style pizza, it's excellent pizza. Our favorites are Florio's and Julian's, and we've gone to Julian's a lot recently since we kind of rediscovered it or discovered it, I guess. And it's got all the classic tastes and flavors of a pizza you'll get in the New York, New Jersey area. I'm from that area. Okay, I was born there. I grew up here. But I've been back plenty of times. My family's up there. Uh, you know, most of my family's up there. So <clears throat> I know what a New York pizza style pizza is supposed to taste like. It doesn't taste like, you know, all the chain stuff. So it's pretty good. And uh, let's try the wine. I think it does it does help with the with the flavor. The crust definitely is the dry crust. It's not that doughy, sweeter crust that you get from like Domino's and Pizza Hut.
I think it works well with the tomato sauce. Um, the problem is that this pizza itself is pretty thin on the tomato sauce. There's more cheese and tomato sauce on it. Um, but I love the pizza. It's great pizza. Um, and you know what? If you like Domino's, if you like Pizza Hut and Papa John's pizza, you like any of those pizzas, and you think it's the best in the world, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with you liking that pizza. Okay. There isn't anything wrong with but but if you think it's on par with like a, going to a, a pizza joint up in up in you know New Jersey, New York, it's not. But it, it's it's a different style of pizza. You know, some people like different styles of you know hot dogs and different um, different ways to cook their steak. So um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to eat the pizza like I normally eat it. I love garlic powder, a little red pepper. So um, we're going to we're going to eat the pizza like I would normally eat it, and then uh, excuse me, and then we're going to go and drink some wine. You've got mail. Now the garlic and the red pepper. The garlic, I just, I just love garlic. I, I put a lot on there. Red pepper gives a little bit of spiciness. Makes me really now. I'm really tasting the pizza like I like the pizza. And and the wine. The wine's intensified a little bit. I think the garlic's helping that out. It's really it, it, it's going really well with with the tomatoes and the cheese and of course with the beets on there. Um, I think it's a good wine. It, it, it the pizza helped the wine. So if I was going to drink the wine by itself. I'd probably give it like an 80, 83. But when you pair it with the pizza, I think it works extremely well with it. And I'd probably give it more of a, an 86. So, since the wine is intended to be drank with, see the problem is I'm not going to be eating the other wine, I'm not going to be eating what you're supposed to eat with. So we're going to go strictly on a wine by itself. It's 83, I think is a little low. We was going to stay with 83. I mean, it's a solid, I, I think it's a good wine, but I think it definitely benefits from the food. So if you're going to buy these wines, you definitely want to buy them if they're, well, at least this is the first, my first experience with it. If you're going to buy the pizza one, you want to make sure you're eating pizza with it or something similar to it. Now, they also have other wines like, you know, pasta with red sauce and chicken and there's some fish ones. Um, so you want, to, you want to take a look at those wines. But uh, overall, it's pretty good. All right, so uh, real quick, uh, as you can probably tell, uh, this is his Wednesday show. We didn't, I didn't get a sommelier school done last week. Um, over the next, well, over today being Tuesday, and then Wednesday, Thursday, whatever, I'll be working on getting North, uh, East Italy, Northeast Italy set up, so the Veneto region, um, which is where two of the three grapes come from. Here. The other grape comes from uh, the Tuscany area, so that will be the following week. Uh, that'll be the next episode or the next lesson after Northeast Italy. Um, so we'll do kind of Tuscany, Central Italy. Um, so uh, so obviously I'll get that done. Um, as always, you know, friend me up. Uh, there, you know, if, if you want to uh, watch this in a, in, a, in a more comfortable setting or like setting like I do when I watch video podcasts, most of, my, most of my watch video podcasts, I'm sitting on the couch watching them on TV. Now, I might have them on the, I, on the iPhone, and I have a little dock that plugs into the TV, or I might be doing it through the Xbox, or I might be watching it on the, you know, on the computer monitor, but um, you, can do, you can watch this on iTunes, uh, automatically downloads every day or every episode there is, so you don't have to worry about going to the website. However, speaking of the website... I would like for you to go to the website because you can do a few things. You can put comments down below. You can send me emails. There's a, you know, there's a forum. I haven't been to it myself either. I know. <clears throat> but there's a forum. If you guys want to start, you know, chit-chatting with each other. And, you know, if I see some activity, maybe I'll stop in and give my opinions right or wrong. Um, then we've got, you know, the, the usual. we got the ads. We've got the donation button, all that kind of stuff. And, of course, the links to friend me up on Twitter, uh, Facebook, 
anywhere else. Uh, you can send me emails. So we've got all that going on. Uh, we are getting closer to episode 100, and I really have no idea what I'm going to do with 100. I thought about doing like a best of show, but I don't know. I, I might do something else. Uh, coming up, Thanksgiving's coming up. I have a wine that I'm looking at right now uh, that I bought off of CinderellaWine.com. Uh, that's you know Gary V's one of Gary V's newest little projects, kind of like Woot.com. You know, one one deal a day. Um, I'm excited to drink that wine. Uh, it'll probably be a Thanksgiving wine. Um, so I'm thinking about doing, if you haven't watched the Halloween episode, go watch it, please. I know that it's a little dark as far as like lighting, but I think it was very creative and very cool and very fun. Um, I had a good time with it, and I've been drinking the vampire wine recently. Uh, I, I do like the vampire wine. I think the evil's better, uh, the best of the three. I haven't had the Pinot evil, but... I know my father had some of it. He said, you're right, it kind of sucks. Um, or he didn't say it sucks. He just said, you're right, it's kind of like um, thin or whatever. I forgot exactly how he put it, but he agreed with me it wasn't very good. Um, though, <clears throat> I'm looking at it right now, and I probably should finish it off because I need some vacuum vins for these wines. Um, but uh, watch the Halloween episode. It's, it's a couple episodes down uh, on the main page. So have some fun with that. It was, a good, it was a good time doing it. And I hope to do more of those. Um, do a Thanksgiving one. Do maybe, a, I'm going to get some Israeli wine. So I know it's not meant to be a Hanukkah wine thing. But since Hanukkah is coming up, I think I'd do something with Hanukkah. Um, maybe do some stuff with Christmas, New Year's. I mean, all the holidays are coming up uh, very close together. So uh, get some wines and do the same format. We do three wines for one special episode. Um... I haven't decided if I'm going to do it like ahead of time, which is probably the better idea to do instead of on the day when you're looking at it going, hey. But I, I kind of like to do it on that day. So uh, when Thanksgiving week comes around, I'll have a Thanksgiving episode. I'll put it up on Thanksgiving. Um, Hanukkah is not one day. I mean, it's several days. I think it's seven or eight. Not positive. Um, but maybe have it like on the first day. Um, Christmas course one day. New Year's one day. But... Um, You'll have them out on that episode. Uh, now that I'm able to, to do the type of stuff and, and uh, maybe like, maybe the three wines have like different price tiers. Like for Thanksgiving, the wine that I bought, I bought, I bought it, I bought it for uh, 22 bucks, and I think it normally sells for 40 or $50. So uh, have some different price points. Yes, I know there's, there's wines other than $10 and under. I think I've rambled on enough. This is a pretty long episode. Um, I'm going to finish my pizza. I'm going to finish some wine, and then uh, we'll do the next wine, which looks like that, for Friday. I really appreciate everyone watching and friending me up and sending me emails, all the winemakers that are interested in doing some Skype tastings. Hey, we got some, some excitement with that, too. We'll see everybody again next time.